A PLA, which is short for Programmable Logic Array, is a programmable circuit that allows us to implement combinational logic. So the PLA is programmable in the sense that we can configure the circuit, not that we necessarily can program the circuit using ordinary programming language that we are otherwise used to. The PLA consists of two layers and this has N inputs and we say it has M outputs. The first layer is an AND area while the second layer is an OR area. And the PLA is configurable such that it can handle a set of implicants and the number of implicants that it can handle is a measure of the size of the PLA. And we're going to mark connections in our PLA with a dot. And the dot is going to tell us which inputs do we want to use for our AND area and also which inputs do we want to use for our OR area. So here is an overview of our AND area. The AND area takes N inputs. So these are our N inputs to the PLA that we denote X1 to Xn. And the input to the AND area will use both the input in its normal form, X1, but also the complement of each of the inputs. So there will actually be two N input lines to our and area. And as the name suggests, our AND area will consist of a set of AND gates. And we're going to say that we have K AND gates in our AND area. And each of the AND gates can take as input one of the two N inputs to our AND area. And we can denote this by saying that this x1 should be an input to our second AND gate and we can also say that x and prime should be an input to our second AND gate by just marking these connections with a dot. And this is what it's meant by being programmable in this case because we can determine which of our inputs is going to serve as an input to each of the AND gates. So we are free to make terms like x1 x and prime as we did in this example but we could also have used the combination x1 x2 x4 x6 prime for example as another implicant and this is typically freely configurable for the user the other part of our pla is our or area and the or area takes the output from the and gates as inputs and in a similar way this is also completely configurable so let's make an example for where we have in our first AND gate we're going to use x1 prime and xn prime and for the second AND gate we again have x1 and xn prime. So if we connect the outputs from these two AND gates to the inputs of our first OR gate this function f1 which is one of the outputs from the OR area could now be written as x1 prime xn prime or x1 xn prime and in total this PLA can support up to m such sums of products but just as a note you may recall that this is not the best way to write this output function but this is just for the sake of the example it is important to minimize the functions as much as possible because the number of AND gates that we have here is not infinite. So we need to make sure that we use as few AND gates as possible in order to fit our functions into the PLA. A typical example of a PLA would be for example n equals 16, so we have 16 different inputs and then we have k in this case equals 48 and then our outputs is equal to 8. So this is just one example of a PLA that is can be seen as a typical uh, size of the PLA. So here if we want to realize 8 functions that each take 16 variables we're only allowed to use on average 48 over 6 which equals 8 implicants for each function. And this is not very much when we have 16 variables so 
Because of that, it is of the essence that we can minimize our functions as much as we can and hopefully also use simultaneous minimization of the different functions. So let us look at an example where we're going to use a PLA to implement the state transition graph for our detector problem. And in this case, we're going to use NBCD coding for our state variables. So for S0, we have 0, 0, for S1, 0, 1, S2, 1, 0, and S3, we have 1, 1. Then we make the Carnot maps for our next state variables, Q1 plus and Q2 plus, and also for our output function. And what we can see here in our Carnot maps, we have quite a few implicants. So when we write our functions, U will be Q1, Q2, X, which is this prime implicant here. We have Q1 plus, which is Q1, Q2 prime, which is this prime implicant here. And then we have Q1 prime, Q2, X prime, which is this prime implicant that we have here. For Q2 plus, we have Q1 prime, Q2 prime, X prime, which is this prime implicant here. And then we have Q1, Q2, X prime, which is this implicant here. And then finally we have Q1, Q2 prime, X, which is this implicant here. So let us realize this using a PLA. So the PLA that we have is actually this part of our realization, where we input our variables X, we also input our variable Q1, and we input our variable Q2. So we have three inputs to this PLA. And then our outputs to the PLA will be U, it will be Q1+, plus, and it will be Q2+. Plus. We see that we have six prime implicants in order to realize our functions, so we also need six AND gates here. The first AND gate is used to realize this prime implicant, Q1, Q2, X, and that we do by making a dot for X here, we make one for Q1 here, and we make one for Q2 here. Our function for Q1 plus is using the prime implicant that has the Q2 prime and the Q1 variables, and it is also using the implicant that has Q2 Q1 prime and X prime. And for this, we use these two prime implicants. Our last function, Q2 plus, uses these three prime implicants, and they are represented in the PLA as this dot here, which is Q2 prime. We have Q1 prime and we have X prime. For the next prime implicant, we have Q2, we have Q1 and we have X prime. And for the last implicant, we have Q2 prime, we have Q1, and we have X. And then all these implicants are used as input to OR functions. For the first OR function, for the output U, we only have one implicant. For the output Q1+, plus, we have two implicants. And for Q2+, plus, we have these three implicants here. And since the PLA only allows us to implement combinational circuits, we need to add our D elements ourselves here in order to get a realization of our sequential circuit. So in summary, our PLA needed to use six AND gates, and it also needed to use three OR gates. And we can do a similar example where we use gray coding of our state instead of NBCD coding. And in this case, we have S0 as 00, S1 as 01, S2 as 11, and S3 as 10. When we do our Carnot maps for this, we find that we get much fewer prime implicants. So when we write our functions, we will have U equals Q1, Q2 prime X, which is this prime implicant here. We have Q1 plus, which is Q2 X prime, which is this in prime implicant here. And we have Q1 Q2, which is this prime implicant here. And then for the Q2 plus function, we have only X prime as a prime implicant. And we can see that when we want to realize this function using a PLA, so we have our PLA here we are going to need much fewer gates. So in this case, we only need four AND gates here. So four AND. And the OR gates that we need 
are still three of course because we have three functions and we are still implementing the exact same state machine with the same behavior as before so we have our input x and we have our output u and this behaves in the same way regardless of if we used NBCD or gray coding but in the gray coding case we could see that we had a much more efficient implementation and we needed to use much fewer AND gates and depending on how many AND gates we have at our disposal in our PLA we might be able to try different state assignments in order to find something that fits into our PLA but regardless of state assignment Obviously, we always need to make sure to minimize our functions as much as possible. An interesting thing to note here is that our PLA is designed to specifically implement our functions on disjunctive form. So if we have our function f of x here, which equals, for example, x1, x2, or x3, x4 prime, then this is an ideal form of the function in order to use a PLA. But what can be done here and what is often done when you're implementing this PLA on gate level, you are not using AND and OR gates. So what you're doing instead is that on this level you can use NAND gates instead. And in this level here you also use NAND gates. And we can see that this works because we can use the Morgan's law. So if we make a prime two times for this function it means that we have the same function again and using the Morgan's law on this inner prime here will give us x1 x2 prime and x3 x4 prime prime and then this whole expression is again primed and this we can always do for the disjunctive form so instead of using an AND gate here, an AND gate here, and an OR gate here, what we do is that we use a NAND gate here, a NAND gate here, and a NAND gate to combine these. And as we will see later, it is more efficient to implement NAND gates than to implement AND and OR gates. So this is an attractive way of implementing the PLA on gate level.